古いマーブルランブル In a world where there are special cards that grant people superhuman abilities, there is a raid on a castle where all the cards are stolen, but there is a force that intervenes, and a wind blows open the case, causing the cards to be released and spread across the world. One month later, we meet a man named Finn as he scopes out the area for his targets. Using a runaway dog as a distraction, he is able to approach his targets and he steals their valuables. We learn he is trying to make money to make payments on an orphanage. But he overhears a meeting between the building owner and his friend Lindsay that the orphanage will be shut down if they can't come up with the money. Wanting to help with the money, Finn tries to pawn off his stolen goods. But the dealer offers him nothing because he can tell it's all stolen, even saying the watch is worthless because it's just a knockoff. Desperate for money, Finn even tries to sell his shirt, but the dealer is not interested. However, the dealer notices a card in his jacket and becomes interested, but Finn tells him it's not for sale. Finn then heads to Bell Land to try his hand at gambling. He plays some poker, going all in and beating out his opponents. He can't believe how easy it is to make money, thanking his lucky card. An older man joins the table, calling himself the lucky lunch man, and says he will show him what real luck looks like. The two play, and Finn gets a straight, but the man is able to produce a flush and win the hand. As they keep playing, Finn ends up getting destroyed, and the man cashes out. The man heads over to play slots, and Finn tries to steal his cash card but he suddenly gets hit in the face as a waiter from above dropped his tray. The man notices Finn on the ground, asking what he wants, and Finn asks to become his apprentice, wanting to know how he is so lucky. The man boasts about his lucky gloves, and Finn tries to steal the card again, but he gets bumped by some men, and he pulls the slot. It ends up landing on the jackpot, and Finn is amazed by his luck. They get approached by the manager, who invites them to the VIP room for some champagne. The man decides to bring Finn along with him, but there is another man named Chris that watches them. The two end up in a backroom and the manager is suspicious of their lucky streak. As he sends his security to search them, the man activates his ability, causing the other guy to trip and fall out of the window. The manager calls for his other guard, but the guy takes out a card and activates his marble rumble ability. The manager realizes the guy isn't one of his men and his arm gets turned into marbles. The man introduces himself as Bobby, and the other guard tries to shoot at him, but also ends up getting turned into marbles. We learn that the old man has the Ten of Diamonds, which gives him the power of good fortune, even protecting him from any harm. Despite this, Bobby threatens to hunt down the man's wife and kids. With no other choice, the man deactivates his power and hands over his card. Suddenly, Chris bursts in, saying he is also after the card. He shoots but Bobby dodges and charges at him, turning his gun into marbles. Chris dodges his attack, taking out his own card and activating his ability, calories high. The two fight, and Chris seems to get the upper hand, but Bobby starts throwing marbles at him. During the chaos, the old man tries to run for it, but slips on some of the marbles and lands on a gun that goes off. The man stumbles over, begging for his card back, but he gets turned into marbles, and Bobby keeps firing at Chris. Chris tells Finn he should make a run for it, but as he tries, he also slips, bumping into Bobby and running off. Bobby suddenly realizes he took the card, and Finn makes a run for it. He runs right past the valet and steals a car. He thinks he will be rich using the card and be able to save the orphanage. He suddenly gets rammed, and Bobby is chasing after him. Bobby aims his marble at him, but Chris also appears, ramming into them and causing them all to crash. Finn manages to get out with minor injuries, but Chris isn't so lucky. He limps forward, asking for the card, but gets shot in the head and dies. Bobby demands for the card, saying he will give Finn a quick death if he complies, but Finn decides to have one last gamble, taking out his card and activating it the same way he watched them do it. A revolver appears, and Bobby shoots his marble, but Finn fires, shattering the marble and landing his shot on Bobby. The fight is over, and Finn is relieved. But suddenly, Chris is standing again, appearing to be completely healed. He pulls his gun on Finn, and they end up in a stalemate. Another car appears, and there are vines that burst out and restrain Finn. When Finn wakes up, he meets two men, Bernard and Vinny. He finds his hands tied up, 
and Vinny deactivates his ability to release him. There is also a girl named Wendy, and as they talk, it seems they have thoroughly researched him, knowing everything from his name, his background with the orphanage, and even his favorite drink. Chris enters, telling him he should forget everything that happened, including his card. Finn tries to grab it, but gets a gun stuck in his mouth. There is suddenly a phone call, and Bernard speaks with their boss. Meanwhile, we see a robbery, as some masked men are making their escape. They run past their associate, who stays behind to deal with the police. The police fire at him, but the shots bounce right off him, and we hear their screams. Back with Finn, Bernard explains that the cards are called X-Plane Cards, with 52 known to exist. Only those chosen by the cards can use its powers, and those people are known as players. Bernard continues to explain that the cards were spread across four countries, and to prevent the chaos of the cards being abused, the king has tasked them with collecting the cards. Finn wonders why he is telling him all of this, and Bernard offers him a job. They show him around, and we see they run a high-end car dealership, but it's really just a front. Bernard tells him that Bobby was part of the Mafia family, which has connections with the police and government. They would be able to easily track him down, so Bernard suggests it would be safest for him to work with them. Finn asks how much they pay, and Bernard tells him his rate for starting as an apprentice, which Finn instantly agrees to, and Bernard returns his card to him. Bernard tells him he needs a suit, and tells Chris to be his mentor. They head to the tailor, and Finn gets fitted. As they chat, Finn wonders how he is still alive, and Chris reveals his ability, calories high, saying he is immortal while it's activated, but it makes him hungry when he uses it. Meanwhile, a detective investigates the scene where the officers were attacked. They find the evidence quite strange, and the rookie suggests they need a task force to deal with the strange occurrences. However, the detective says they need to fight fire with fire. Finn heads to a diner with Chris, who is chatting up a woman, but there is a disturbance, as a man gets angry at the waiter for getting him dirty. The waiter continuously apologizes, and Finn tries to calm the man down, which leads to the man punching him, but he is stopped by Chris, who easily restrains him. The man storms out, and the waiter thanks them, but Chris is more interested in the girl. Back at the orphanage, Finn tells Lindsay that he got a job at the dealership, and that they won't need to worry about money anymore. The next morning, Finn wakes up at 5.30, he gets picked up by Chris, and he is annoyed he had to get up so early. They get alerted by an armored truck, and even the police give way to them, and start to form a barricade. Chris activates his card, telling Finn to just watch him, since it's his first time, but Finn activates his own card, insisting on getting some action. They chase after the armored truck, and Finn attempts to take out the wheels, but the back suddenly opens, and the huge man jumps out, landing on their car. Finn recognizes the man as the waiter that they had helped out. The man tries to step on him, and Finn fires at him, but the shot bounces right off him. Chris starts driving wildly, trying to shake the man off, and the man ends up going flying. The man gets back up, seemingly unarmed. Chris reveals that the man has the rock and rock card, which allows him to harden his body. Meanwhile, the cops have set up a barrier, and the rookie says they should be going after the criminals, but the detective reminds her that they can only fight fire with fire. Finn continues to fight but his shots have no effect at all. He wonders what his power is, and the man lunges at him, but Chris rams him with the car. The man smashes through the window, grabbing him by the neck, but Chris realizes his weakness, driving over to the lake, and driving right off the edge. The car sinks to the bottom, and as the man drowns, his card is deactivated. Chris on the other hand, struggles to get out of the car, but Finn is able to see through to him, shooting through the glass, and Chris manages to get free. The three emerge from the lake, and the mission is a success. Back at the dealership, Chris compliments Finn on his marksmanship, and officially welcomes him to the team. He was impressed at Finn's performance, considering his car is only a two of spades. Finn is confused at what that means, and Chris reveals that two is the lowest ranked card, so his power is considered to be the weakest. But that's where this video ends. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more of the series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.